Hi Aces 102. I just wanted to give you a quick primer on systems thinking before you start entering into this homework assignment. The key aspect that you need to be focusing on here is how we measure the performance of our systems. Okay? There's lots of ways that we've already discussed this. Sustainability is useful for providing many potential measures. Okay? Hopefully you got it right on the homework already in part one of this assignment. The environmental, social, and economic are the three primary spheres we pay attention to when we talk about sustainability. This has been true for many years. And within each, there are numerous different ways that we measure sustainability. Lots of them. Okay? And in fact, there's many more at the interfaces of each of those, too. All of them are different ways to measure performance. When we talk about which ones are the most important to us, we have to pick. Which ones do we want to favor? Now the trouble is with complex systems, you fix one, you're probably influencing another. That's something we just have to understand. So at this point, if you haven't read Meadows, it's really important that you do. The second half of that chapter is a great overview on the way different measures, different stocks can be influenced by different types of variables. Okay, So let's look at it from this way. Think about a stock. A stock is a place that we store things. Think about it like a storage bin. It could be full, it could be empty, it might be halfway. It's also potential for it to change over time, okay? So what's being represented in this diagram here is that somewhere there's a valve, you turn on that valve and it starts to fill up with stuff. Your stock starts to fill up with stuff, okay? You don't necessarily care where it's coming from, that's what the cloud means. It's coming from somewhere and it's filling up your stock. A great example of this for a material flow is that you can bring uh, water and fill up a tub when you turn on the faucet. Very straightforward, okay? You know how to do this. You don't also don't necessarily care where the water comes from. You just care that I need to take a bath and we're filling up the tub. The water's good to go. There are instances and times where you do care where the water is coming from. Uh, there's some notable ones in the news today. Flint, Michigan, of course. Uh, but for the most part, we're lucky. We don't always have to think about this. That's what those clouds mean. This is true conceptually as well. It's true by energy as well. Uh, but let's think, talk conceptually right now. I have a relationship bank account that I maintain with a lot of people that are around me, notably my wife. I'm always doing good if I bring home flowers. Maybe I'll do it really soon. Okay? If I open up that faucet, I let the water flow, I bring in flowers, and it fills up that account. I can have more quality to my relationship in that stock because of that act. Okay? Things go both ways, though. You can fill up the tub, you can empty the tub. The drain is open, the drain is closed, depending on the combination of the influent faucet, the outflu uh, uh, effluent uh, drain tells you how much water is in the tub. Sometimes it's filling, sometimes it's at a constant level, sometimes it's empty. Okay? And, by the way, once again, for the most part, we don't necessarily care where the water goes to. We're lucky. There are times when you do. Same is true in relationships. Uh, if I bring flowers, good. I've done a good thing for my relationship bank account. It increases. But if I forget somebody's birthday, it decreases. You can picture that. Um, this is a good time to be doing this example. Valentine's Day was just yesterday. I hope you did something good. I hope you didn't forget. But you know that if you have a significant other and you went one way or the other, something happened to your relationship bank account and maybe it was better, maybe it was worse. Hopefully it was better for all of us. Uh, the amount of the stock can have influence on the flow. This is a very interesting one, we have, and you're probably familiar with it. I can get interest, a type of flow of money going into my savings account, and that's a function. How much of that flow is? Is it a big flow? Is it a small flow? Is a function of how much money is in the savings account. What else is it a function of? Well, the interest rate. You know this. It makes a lot of sense. This is a special kind of relationship. We call this a loop. If you see, if you notice that circular uh, rotation on the right hand side, you notice that there's a reinforcing aspect to this loop. And that's in fact what we do call this. We call it a reinforcing loop. That's a nice loop. It will grow forever. If you never take money out of that account, you notice there's no outflows drawn here. If you never take money out of that account, it will grow forever. That's a nice type of loop to have in certain instances. Not always, but in certain instances. There's balancing loops out there too. Let's think about this one. If you have a pile of homework that you need to get done, you need to make it into completed assignments. You know you have your stock of completed assignments before you hand them in. Well, 
the amount of stuff in my completed assignments pile, I've done this survey many different times and a lot of students tell me as that pile of completed assignments increases, I feel like I've accomplished something, right? Well, sometimes I start slowing down the rate of my work in creating new completed assignments to add to that particular bin, that particular stock of completed assignments. If that's true, that's what we call a balancing loop on the right hand side. One that reaches a steady state eventually is what we uh, consider that. We'll talk about this in more detail down the line. Uh, there's other things that influence these things. And by the way, sometimes we don't always just care about that these uh, assignments are coming out of the ether. In reality, they're probably coming from another stock, aren't they? Sometimes if you care about both of those stocks, we might draw it like this, where we have a stock of pending assignments, things, homework assignments that are waiting for me to do them. And depending on various factors, I work, I open that valve, I close that valve, but if it's open, I turn pending assignments and make them into completed assignments on the right hand side. There are factors that affect the flow, right? We already talked about the completed assignments. If that pile gets high, I tend to work a little bit less and I slow down that rate and I, and I make fewer completed assignments in the future. But the opposite is true as well. If I have a lot of pending assignments, I open up that valve and I try to work harder and I work faster. And if that's true, the flow goes to the right and it increases. Now these two loops, they compete against one another. Okay, I, I shouldn't have said loops, by the way. That's a mistake. There's not actually a loop on the left-hand side. There's possibly a relationship out there, but I haven't drawn it because I don't understand it. There are other factors, external factors as well, that might affect, affect the vowel. I've talked about, this is a survey I've done many times too. If I drink a little extra coffee tomorrow, I can get a little bit more work done. I can stay a little bit more focused, and that's a good thing. Your challenge now is to think about the documentary conceptual idea and think about what would be a key performance indicator for your system, okay? What causes the stock associated with your key performance indicator to go up or down? Ask yourself that and see if you can start thinking about whether or not you have some reinforcing or balancing loops. Good luck.